accessories and trims. Unit 5, Jewelry and Fashion. Module 4, Jewelry Worn on the Body, Part 2. Hello and welcome to Fashion Accessories and Trims. This is Unit 5 of the course, which introduces us to the fascinating world of jewelry. As we progress through this unit, we will examine jewelry and adornments in relationship to fashion and the human body. In this module 4 of the unit, which is a continuation of module 3, we will discuss jewelry that is worn on the body. Particularly, we will look at in detail the jewelry that is worn on the midriff and the lower torso of the human body. The midriff is at the center of the human body and therefore deserves attention and yes adornment. Unlike the other parts of the body where ornaments are more aesthetic than functional, those worn at the waist and hip tend to have strong reasons so as to why they are worn. In the previous module we opened the discussion on jewelry that is worn on the body. We looked at shoulder ornaments and those that are worn on the neck and chest. In this module, we will discuss jewellery that is worn on the midriff and lower torso of the human body. We will also explore body chains and midriff ornaments like buckles. We will study various waist ornaments worn in India along with hip chain and other hip ornaments. We will also learn about the genital cover jewellery that is worn in India. Jewellery worn on the body In the previous module of this unit, we looked at some ornaments that are worn on the body. We studied fibula and several necklaces along with brooches and pins. There were a certain ornaments that were beyond the scope of that particular module like body chains and ornaments worn at piercings. In this module, we will look at them in detail. Let us begin with body piercings. Piercing, as we know, is a popular method of body modification just after tattooing. While ear and nose piercings as discussed in module 2 of this unit are the most common. Eyebrow, tongue, lip and jaw piercings are also done to enhance the face. Then there are those who pierce their body at nipples, navel, back and even genital organs. The piercings are either adorned with stone studs or small rings. This practice is not widespread or popular but there are groups of people who have had their body modified through piercings for centuries. Then there are those who adapt these as their ideal of beauty changes. There are those who practice piercings as a method of rebellion. Whatever their intention behind getting a piercing, it is still a very popular method of enhancing your beauty or giving yourself a sense of identity. Body chains and cages. Body chains are those that are worn on the body. They start either at the neck or shoulder and reach the waist or hips. A body chain could be a single or multiple strand of chains, worn singularly or like a mesh. Some of these chain coverings cover the entire body like a cage. They could also be worn crossed at the chest or at the back. The tradition of wearing body chains goes back to the Hellenistic period. Old figurines show large medallions centered on the breast and the middle of the back. While the longer of two chains fit over the shoulders, two shorter ones go beneath the arms.
the fetish subculture sees uses of body chains and body chains made up of strips of leather for bondage while modern body cages are made of series of thin chains or strands of beads that could cover only the chest or hang from the neck and go below the bust there are those that trace the rib cage from front to the back or completely envelop the body that is these chains cage the body and hence are known as body chains or body cages there are those variations that are available in the market that are also known as chain body armor in india it is common to see folk dancers of different regions wearing garlands as body chains even today while most of these garlands would be made up of flowers like those worn by the folk dancers of south india they could also wear those made up of sandalwood beads or cowrie shells as in the case of the muria tribe of madhya pradesh in rajput miniatures and mughal paintings it is possible to see the evidence of royal women wearing cross body chains known as baddi or bandi which means to tie they would have two floral focals one each at the front and back that is at the chest and at the back and two amulets jantra in ancient india both men and women would wear a beaded vaikaksha these are two long strips of beads or pearls crossed at the chest statues of royalty also show them wearing an atkan an atkan is a long bead necklace worn a slant over the left shoulder and under the right arm much like the sacred thread and yes of course finally we do have the yagna pavitta or the sacred thread that is worn by several communities in india even today while yagna pavitas of the yor were made up of metal today apart from those in silver and gold it is very common to see the sacred thread worn in cotton thread midriff jewelry the area on the human body from under the bust line to the lower waist line is known as the midriff it includes the stomach and hence the waist as well in this section we are going to look at several pieces of jewelry that can be or was worn at the midriff belly chain or waist chain this is a thin belt or a chain worn at the waist it could have a focal dangles or tassels while thin shimmering chains are worn by a lot of dancers those worn by belly dancers are very different i am stressing this point here because many people tend to associate belly chains with belly dancers the ones worn by belly dancers are almost like a belt sometimes made up of fabric and decorated with tassels of silk beads and chains the belt is cut in a v shaped pattern to accentuate the waist and the hip belt buckles in unit 4 we have looked at belt as an accessory and how it evolved in this module we are going to be focusing on the ornamental focal on the belt or the belt buckle the word buckle here refers to an ornamental clasp like focal worn at the waist it is used to fasten a fabric leather or even a metal belt buckles symbolize control of power and prosperity and hence jeweled buckles were highly decorative apart from being functional in the past they were made of silver using embossé that is repose techniques or they could be casted focals decorated with granulation or they could be made of wire in by using filigree work there are buckles that are studded with gemstones or decorated with enameling and inlay work the ancient roman wore square shaped buckles in iron and brass the xiongnu chinese nomadic traders were wore elaborately decorated belt buckles as status symbols 
in some ethnic Macedonian communities. Brides wear two silver bells, uskolek, a beadwork ornament worn at the sides of the belt, and a belt sort of a necklace in form of a stomacher. This would be trimmed with old silver coins and worn on top of fabric belts as well. In Bulgaria, metal belt buckles called pafti, which are round or oval, cast or wrought were worn. They were decorated with botanical ornamentation and sometimes mother of pearl appliques of Jerusalem plates engraved with beautiful iconographic scenes. In Hollywood Western movies, cowboys are seen to be wearing flashy buckles in gold and silver. Some of them even act as holders for mini guns. During the Art Nouveau period, buckles were set with paste rhinestones were very popular. These often imitated the flowing lines of silver designer buckles of the period which were considered true jewellery. People in Asia, particularly Malaysia and Indonesia, wore spectacular belt buckles in the past. The Indonesian Minangkabau buckle and the Malaysian Peranakan belt buckle pending are objects of desire. Many such beautiful specimens of belts and belt buckles worn by the Malaysian people can be seen at the traditional textiles museum in Malaysia. A pending is a traditional Malay belt buckle of ogival form and could be gem studded gold. It could also be finely patterned silver gilt, silver or brass with yellow patterning. They were widely worn as fashion statements prior to the influx of European style clothing in British Malaya in the early 1900s. Now, having looked at a small introduction of belt buckles in different parts of the globe, let us turn our attention to traditional Indian waist and hip ornaments. I am not sure if you have noticed, but in India you see people wearing gold and brass ornaments on the top half of their body and silver ornaments typically on the lower half. In the hands, they would wear copper in addition to silver and gold. This is said to help with the blood and oxygen circulation as the silver reacts well with the earth's energy and the gold channelizes the body's aura. Thus, at the midriff, you can see ornaments with a combination of both metals. Now, let us take a look at some traditional Indian waist and hip ornaments. Kayaband, part of the original trifecta of Indian costumes, the Antharya, Uttarya and Kayaband. It is a fabric or a sash that is worn around the waist as a belt. Kamarband or Kamarpatta. Kamarband refers to traditional belts worn by both men and women. Different states in India have different versions of the Kamarband. This ornament in fabric form also gave rise to the English kamarband with a C that is worn with dinner jackets during black tie events. Kamardhani or pun and getha. Both these kind of ornaments are flexible chain like belts. They are made in silver and worn in Karnataka and Maharashtra. While the kamardhani and pun could have a clasp as a closure. The getta has a loop and bead closure making it adjustable. 
Now the chains used in all these pieces could be braided, knitted or even looped. While kamardani and kamarpatta are simple lengths of chain, more complex variations could include ornamental buckles and tassels like the mekhalas of yore. Uddianam is a rigid metal, silver or gold or gold plated brass belt that could, that could be adjustable or non-adjustable. The adjustable ones are continuous at the back and have a slider based locking system in the front. The fixed ones have a hinge at the back and a clasp in the front. In both styles, the front portion is ornamented with coins, stones and images of Goddess Lakshmi. Araipati Araipati is a waist belt style of Tamil Nadu where the belt is made of square or rectangular hinged units. Aramani Aramani is a casted brass belt worn in Kerala with belts or bead dangles. It can be tied at the back using a string. Yakbani Yakbani is a belt that is worn to suspend the sword and could have an ornamental bucklass as a fastener. Now these were typically used by royalty and by soldiers in the days of the past. Bucklass These are ornamental metal belt buckles that could be further enhanced with gemstones. Other techniques of ornamentation include filigree, riposse and inlay work. While the word bucklas could be the corruption of the word buckle or it could be vice versa too. It has another traditional name. Parkar. Parkar refers to patka sat or patka sar and it used to hold the patka in place. Traditional Indian ornaments worn on the hip. Apart from the commonly seen hip chains of today. Ancient Indian women also used to wear a variety of ornaments at the hip. If you visit any of the old temples in India, you will come across sculptures of dancers and courtesans wearing these beautiful waist and hip ornaments. Mekhala Mekhala is a multi-stringed, beaded, hip belt worn by courtesans and dancers in ancient times. Originally, they are said to be made from a red seed called kaksha and then much later they were made using silver and gold. There are variations of mekhala where there are bells only in the front or there are ones that have bells all around the body. This we can assume was typically meant for a dancer as it is impossible to sit down wearing this kind of a belt. Patka A patka originally refers to a strip of wooden beads tucked in in the front of the waist thereby reaching the ankle. Later, patkas were made using a variety of materials. Grass, leaf, reed, leather and even fabric. Today, Patka refers to a embroidered or embellished or ornated fabric pleats that start at the waist and end at the knee, calf or ankles. You can see shorter variations of patkas worn by Bharatanatyam dancers. Juda, challa or chabi ka challa. These are ornamental tassels or key holders that are worn at the waist to keep the pleats of the lower garment in check. They are also meant to keep the key safe. A chabika challa is a sign of ownership and prestige. And I hope that you would remember that I mentioned this ornament when talking about shuttle lines in the module on bags. Genital jewelry. Genital jewelry is a slightly touchy topic 
as it refers to ornaments worn at or near the genital organs. It includes cash sex ornaments and piercings. In this module, we will be only considering cover ornaments and not piercings. A cash sex is an item of clothing, adornment or body covering that is used to cover the genital organs. A typical G-string, a fundoshi or a komanam that is a thinner version of a langoti comes in this category as they are items of clothing. There are ornament or jewellery versions of these two. While the primary objective of such pieces of both clothing and jewellery is modesty, it can also be used as a fetish object and for eroticism. The jewellery versions can also be called as modesty plates. They are triangular or heart shaped or cap shaped and can be typically made out of silver, gold or brass. Traditional genital jewellery in India. In a country as old as India, belief in amulets and their protective powers is strong. So it is customary to wear amulets in one form or the other. Since amulets are mostly hidden from view and must be worn near natural human orifices to prevent the entry of evil spirits into the body, amulets are worn at the pelvic region as cash sex ornaments. Now let us take a look at some such ornaments that are being worn in India. Aranjanam, Aranjan Kaira or Aranyan Kaira. An Aranyan Kaira or Aranjanam or Aranjan Kaira is a waist belt used to tie up and hold a loin cloth. It is tied to a baby's waist 28 to 30 days after birth and the length is increased as the baby grows. It is used to monitor the growth of the baby and on the practical side also provides an anchor for the cloth diapers. The rope chain that is worn can be plain with tiny bead dangles or with amulet charms known as the aremudi. Such pieces are worn low on the waist or hip at the pelvic region. Just as aranjan is an umbrella term, there are versions in gold and silver. Venjan refers to a silver chain and punjan refers to a gold chain. Traditionally, the strings were made of silver as it was believed to help with digestion and increase fertility. But as time passed, the practice became optional and thus silver was substituted with a cotton string, often in black or red color, simply for cost reasons. While a lot of men continue to wear them their entire life, it is not uncommon for women in India today to convert their childhood kaira into necklaces or chains and not wear them on the hip. One of the intended uses of this chain for female adults was to enable them to tuck their saris in it before the usage of petticoats became common in India. Arai mudi, arasala or aras ilai. The female genitalia covers are called aran ilai, aal ilai, banyan leaf or arai mudi. It could be in the shape of a fig leaf, a banyan leaf, sometimes even a heart and it's typically worn on the aranjan kaira or aranjanam. The female covers look like a yoni and are decorated with flowers and other fertility symbols. The male counterparts sometimes look like bells. Come, let's take a peek into my jewellery box where I show you some waist and hip ornaments that I have. Let me offer you a sneak peek into my jewellery box to show you some items that I have with regard to waist and hip jewellery. The first one you see right here is a typical sari clip. It has four meenakhari in it. I have added a ring at the bottom so that you can understand where the key ring goes. 
there are also other versions of very similar styles where the key ring goes at the back of the big focal the other piece that you see right here is in complete contrast to the first one this is not a key holder but it is a charm that is worn along with the key holder if you only happen to have a couple of keys they could also go on here at this point items such as these are more decorative than functional for they are not built to take everyday wear and tear the first piece that we see here is a very contemporary version of a hip chain or a khardani this particular one is now being worn in many parts of the country particularly in northern india in up and bihar this is a set of graduated four pearls worn as a hip chain the hooks that you see here can be tucked in at the waist and it is worn on the side and not at the front or back I have two more hip ornaments for you today which come under the tassel category. They are the challa or chabi ka challa. I have two variations for you today. One with one in gold that has four enameling work done on it. And the other one is made up of silver with acrylic stone set in it. In the one on the left the keys are actually fastened using a key ring at the back of the focal i've hung a ring for you to see where the keys would come there is also another variation of this piece where your focal completely hides the keys that are hung at the back in those cases the key hook will be hung somewhere over here with another bigger focal covering the key ring the second piece that you see right here is more decorative than functional the tassel here is attached to the key ring and then the whole thing might be worn on the waist using the hook this is used in cases where the wearer wants to add a little bit of extra to the keys this particular kind of a pattern is not recommended for a whole bunch of keys but rather for one or two keys as it tends to make the key bunch really heavy in case of singular keys it acts as a keychain and make sure that the keys don't get lost because the dangles produce sound this is a body cage ornament and it comprises of a focal here at the neck followed by a piece of chain that runs around the center front and then there is also a similar chain that goes under your bust the typically this is a female ornament it can also be worn by men ornaments such as this work to keep the garment that is worn inside in place but today on the party wear circuit or in the concert circuit it is worn over a bralette or a tank top in order to have a more ornamental look DIY easy to make gold buckle chain belt so far we have listed out various ornaments that are worn at the waist and at the hip and also at the pelvic region now it is time for us to see if we can make this more interesting in this tutorial section i am going to show you how you can make your own waist ornament a waist belt using a metal focal metal chain and some jump rings to make this topic even more interesting for you i am going to be showing you a small project that you can do we are going to be creating a beautiful chic 
an elegant gold color waist belt that you can probably use as ethnic wear or party wear. That's what you would need for this waist belt project. You would need a buckle, preferably something that is oval in shape. Mine is casted metal. You would need a belt buckle that either has loops or holes like this in the side. If you do not get a focal that is made for a belt buckle, you can also use a pendant. You would need a length of chain that is equivalent to your waist circumference. You would need some jump rings, a couple of buttons with perforations or any charm that you would use to add as a lacne peep to the end of your chain. You would also need an extra length of chain. The piece that I have here is 6 inches long. Finally and most importantly you would require a clasp. Now this clasp is slightly bigger than your regular necklace clasp as it is worn in the front and becomes a part of your decorative focal. We would also require a simple chain nose plier and a wire cutter to cut your wire. The first step in this project would be to measure your waist and determine the amount of chain that you would require. Once you have done that and cut the chain, cut another extra piece of chain and keep it separately. Now we will begin by connecting one end of the chain using jump rings to the focal like this. You can also add couple of more jump rings if you so desire and if you want an even secure hold. I am going to leave mine with one. Now take another jump ring connect it to your clasp. Make sure that the slider portion of your clasp is at the top. This way it will be more comfortable for you to wear your belt. Now remember to twist your jump ring open and not pull it apart. Close. Your belt is almost ready. All you have to do is to add how many ever jump rings you want to this end. Now this is to make your waist belt adjustable. I am going to simply add two. Now to the second or the last ring that you have you connect your extra length of chain and close it. Now this will make the belt look as though it is continuous but this portion will fasten on to your clasp making it look like a belt. Now it is time for you to add a little more to your belt. Imagine that you are wearing this with a little black dress and you want a little something more a playful tassel or a charm at the end of your belt. What do you do? In my case I am adding something a little simple like a rustic wooden button to the end of the piece so that it looks very chic. I am doing this to balance out all the yellow gold that is there in this belt. Now you could also add a chain tassel you could add pearls, you could add any number of things that strike your fancy. Now you can make this even more ornamental by joining two buttons. I am doing the same process here. And I am connecting the buttons to 
the final end of the chain. Secure everything firmly. Now your beautiful belt is ready. Conclusion This concludes the lesson on jewellery worn on the body from neck and shoulder, chest, waist and hip. In this particular module, we have looked at different ornaments worn on the waist, hip and pelvic region in particular. We have discussed traditional Indian ornaments like Kamarpatta, Udyanam, Mekala, Patka and Aranjanam. I have also demonstrated to you a simple idea of making your own ornamental belt that you could wear to an ethnic or a party like event. In the next module, we would be discussing ornaments that are worn on the hands and legs.